Well, first of all, congratulations, Illinois farmers, as we hit a record 214 bushels per acre in 2022, according to the USDA's NAS reporting system. In 2021, we hit 202, and in 2018, we hit a record 210 bushels per acre. One of our lowest years that we can remember was in 2008 with 179. We are overall pretty thankful for this year. Today on Illinois Corn TV, we will learn about the new PACE program. We will meet Shane Gray from District 10, and we will get an update on the WOTUS rule coming in March. Feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more Illinois Corn TV videos, updates, and agriculture information affecting you, the Illinois farmer. Well, there's a new program called PACE, Post Application Coverage Endorsement Crop Insurance. PACE is designed for corn producers who are looking to strategically apply nitrogen. It will provide supplemental coverage when a producer plans on split applying nitrogen, but is prevented due to field conditions caused by adverse weather. It gives farmers the opportunity to use split apply to increase the efficiency, decrease the nitrogen runoff, and maximize their financial investment. Here is a report from Stu Ellis with Marsha Bunger from the USDA Risk Management Agency with a recent Illinois Corn Connection. When he is purchasing that fertilizer chemical and we now have the technology to be more strategic about where we place that product, this just kind of marries up with that. By having a PACE endorsement, you're protecting the risk that you're taking by split applying your nitrogen across that field. It's, a t it's about timing when you apply that fertilizer, and so because of the value of the crops these days, you want to try to get the most yield that you possibly can, but yet at the same time, Mother Nature still has a say. And so with that, if for some reason you can't get that application applied timely, that's what that PACE endorsement does. And so thank you to the Illinois farmers and um, their innovative support of this. Well, we are excited to welcome Shane Gray to District 10 of the Illinois Corn Growers Association Board. Shane is keeping busy with more than just farming. He is the owner of S&J Gray Trucking Incorporated and an agent of John Risk Management. Tara Desmond from the Illinois Corn Marketing Team had a chance to ask Gray some fun questions so we could learn more about him. When asked if he could travel back at any time in history, when would it be? Grace said it would be the wild, wild west with the open range, campfires, and cow towns. That would be pretty exciting. What was something most people don't know about Gray? Well, it is he loves doing jigsaw puzzles and it must be a minimum of 1,000 pieces. How about what food represents Gray's personality? He said pizza because it's laid back, versatile, and flexible. Finally, what movie would Gray like to live in? He said The Breakfast Club. You know, the one with the high school students who are in detention end up sharing their life challenges over two hours and wind up being good friends. Yep, that one. It was a great 80s movie. Finally, what does the new WOTUS rule mean and what's next? In a story from Megan Dwyer with Illinois Corn, she reports this final rule will go into effect around March 15 of this year. We are closely watching the Supreme Court for a ruling on the Sackett versus EPA case and expect that to come prior to March 15th. That ruling could have significant impact on the EPA's final rule requiring major revisions. We would also expect industry lawsuits challenging this new WOTUS rule. Well, let's start with the positives. Several items were excluded from the final rule, but the devil will be in the details of agency interpretation and implementation. A few of those items include prior converted cropland was omitted, but you do need to have a USDA prior converted cropland certification for any applicable acreage. Swales and erosional features characterized by low volume, infrequent or short duration flow, artificial lakes or ponds created by excavating or diking dry land, water field depressions created in dry land incidental to construction activity. Illinois Corn will continue to advocate on behalf of what's best for Illinois farmers. If you have any comments or questions, please reach out to Megan Dwyer. 
Thanks for being with us today on Illinois Corn TV, and I hope you have a great week.